Galactic Navy Officer Becomes an Adventurer, written by Edo, Chapter 39 Operation Planning Part 2. I have no words to describe just how ludicrous this all sounds. Just who was the genius who implemented this sort of messed up policy? But I do admit it suited my purposes just fine. I can't just give up due to the current situation and do nothing. I'll struggle as much as I possibly can. Damn it. By the way, this planet is not part of the Empire, so instead of seizure or requisitioning, I believe the words invasion or forced occupation are more appropriate, sir. Calling it an invasion just doesn't sit well with me, you know. Forced occupation, huh? Okay then. Iris, we're gonna, uh, hold up. Let me redo that line. I don't get many opportunities to say such cool lines, so I want to nail it perfectly. Let's make this count. Iris, we, proud members of the Imperial Forces, will now proceed to occupy this planet, Ares, under the glorious name of the Human Galactic Empire, and bring it to the Empire's fold. Understood, duh. Bummer. Can't you just play along for once? Iris? No one has ever incorporated a planet to the Empire by means of a forced occupation. If you accomplish this successfully, your name will be recorded in the annals of history. Captain Duh. Well, there's a good chance I'll be labeled the greatest villain in Imperial history, though. Oh well. I don't plan on giving up easily, Iris. I will save the humans of this planet. I swear. Of course, even if we're going the forced occupation route, the use of brute force alone is not a given. There's no point in doing that after all. Anyway, we'll first need an established foothold to serve as a base of operations. And it will eventually become the central capital of planet Ares. Please choose a suitable site while considering the availability and accessibility of resources and the terrain. This area will be the most suitable, Sir Dot. The map of the continent popped up in front of me. A red dot was placed on top of a white-colored section of the map. Chim. It wasn't that far from our current position. Why did you choose this area? Firstly, according to a spectrum analysis done by the drones, the amount of mineral resources in this area is many magnitudes higher than anywhere else in the continent. And there is also a lot of wood and stone for use in fortress building. Moreover, there is also an abundance of fossil fuels as well as alternative energy sources that can be extracted from monsters. This area has higher concentrations of them compared to the rest of the continent as well. There is no better area to build our base of operations on DOT. So you've already considered the monsters as alternative energy sources, huh? HM? Hold up. Is this place the so-called Great Demon Forest by any chance? Affirmative, DOT. This place is filled to the brim with monsters that often spill out into territories occupied by humanity. Right? Will it really be okay? There will be no problems. Okay then. I'll leave the construction of the base to you. Do as you see fit. By my estimate, this area will probably be developed into proper imperial territory within the next 20 years. Things like filling up the population and constructing the living areas will take quite a bit of time after all. If you use that time frame, you will probably not make it in time for the bug invasion, Captain. At the very least, we would need to build a livable city that can house 10,000 people within five years. Dot. I see. So, a city within five years, huh? Man, that sure is rough. Would it be better if I occupied a country or something? Nah, causing bloodshed in order to prevent bloodshed in the future is pretty messed up. I'm not saying I'm planning on keeping my hands clean but I'd like to avoid unnecessary sacrifices as much as possible. Building a reactor and launching it out into space will be an extremely grand and difficult undertaking. I cannot take measures that will possibly reduce the population of this planet that much. But even if Iris manages to gain a foothold in the Great Demon Forest and built a city there, just who will agree to live in it, I wonder? If it were me, I would definitely be suspicious and apprehensive if someone suddenly approaches me and tells me about a secret and wonderful place to settle down or something. And no matter how much honeyed words are used to persuade them, I can't imagine people suddenly abandoning their current lifestyles in order to head out to God knows where. Well then, how about starting out as part of an established country? Right. For example, 
getting acknowledged as nobility and being given the right to develop one's own territory. If we recruit potential residents by promising low taxes and other incentives, I'm sure we can expect quite a few willing to relocate. It seems pretty convenient as a means to gather people. In any case, I still need to spend time thinking about possible measures. I'm going to think about possible measures to gather people. Please give me some time. Understood. Da. By the way, what's the estimated probability of building a reactor and launching it out to orbit within 500 years? Just give me a rough number. Well, about 2%, I guess. Dot. Hey now. Earlier it was just 0% and now we're up to 2. We're making progress. Well, I didn't expect you would actually propose subjugating this planet, Captain. The probability percentage has slightly increased as a result. Dot. Well, I guess I'm just glad we're moving in a positive direction, no matter how insignificant the development is. It was already time for breakfast, so I cut the call with Iris and headed downstairs. I found the girls already sitting in the dining area, talking with each other animatedly while having tea. I'm glad they all managed to get along. Good morning. What are you girls talking about? Good morning, Alan. Cleria and Elna were teaching us about things regarding this continent. Shem. What did they teach you? Mostly about the nobles living in this continent. We were not familiar with them, so it really helps a lot. Hey, now that's something I want to hear as well. I'll have Sharon and Selena tell me about the things I missed later. I'm interested in that as well. Let me listen in if you girls don't mind. Before that, Alan. I also have something to ask. What is it? Are you actually part of royalty, Alan? What's up with that? I can't be part of royalty, can I? Why'd you come to such a conclusion anyway? No, it's fine if I was mistaken. I'm sorry about asking such a weird thing. Cleria was acting relieved for some reason. What's up with her? Our breakfast was brought out soon after. The breakfast this morning was hamburgers. There's a lot of them piled up on a large plate. These probably made use of the leftover minced meat from yesterday. The buns sandwich thick meat patties along with slices of cheese, tomatoes, and fresh lettuce. The sauce was made from a combination of ketchup and mayonnaise. MM. Delish. It was a little on the heavy side for breakfast, but tasty stuff is tasty. Wah. These are also delicious. Sharon and Selena lost themselves in the taste of food once again. Cleria was enamored as well. The pile of hamburgers on top of the large plate was cleared out in no time. It seems the things Cleria and Elna discussed regarding nobility were stuff that was only known among noble circles. It was perfect since I also wanted to know more about the nobility system right now. Can commoners be appointed as nobles? Well, cases like that are quite rare. In the Starvik Kingdom, there was a party of adventurers that defeated three grown wyverns. The leader of that party ended up receiving the title of baron. Elna explained, I am familiar with that story as well. That was supposedly given as part of a reward for saving a village from those wyverns. Whoa! So adventurers can actually become nobles, huh? And just for killing some monsters at that. Shem. So is exterminating monsters enough in order to get promoted? No, simply vanquishing monsters is not enough. Adventurers who were successfully appointed as nobles were all famous and well-loved by the people of the land. That's right. Countries have the penchant of giving out noble titles to adventurers with considerable levels of prestige. I see. So just simply killing monsters won't do. So I gotta become world famous and hella popular, huh? That'll be troublesome. Seems it won't work out as smoothly as I thought. After breakfast, Cleria and Elna headed out to the courtyard to spar as usual. I would have proceeded to busy myself with making magic tools usually, but I have another agenda today.